Right. So this is part nine. I, th I say every time at the beginning, I say, I think. I think it's part eight, I think it's part nine, but yeah. This is part nine, pretty sure. Um, so what this is, is I mentioned last time that I was going to remove the help window because it, it had nothing in it anyway. So I thought it's best to remove that and do something a little bit more complicated, I guess. And um, it was kind of requested as well in, in a message someone had sent me, so it ties in a bit with that. But um, what it is, is we're going to have this favourite window. Now, within this favourite window, it's going to have the tips which you have selected as, as a favourite tip. Like clicking a star and, you know, it's just the, the, the sort of functionality that people are used to. So within the app, it, it, would, it would be something that someone would... Um, I guess automatically expect so what you can do is in the when you view a tip it has a star now in the top right hand corner if you favorited it then the star is yellow if you haven't then it's like a white color um, what I'll do is I'll show you that now and then we'll go through go through the code and stuff right so I'll just log in I'm just logging in as this one because this is the one I've added the the favourite tips to. So let's have a look. So we log in. Right, so now fave tips I've put, because obviously I've put favourite tips, it wouldn't fit, but yeah. Just called it fave tips. It could be anything, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is the functionality. So fave tips, if I click in here. This contains all of the tips that I have selected as my favourites. And there's a load more as well. If you click that, that's all of them. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, yeah. So when you click through into one of these, you'll notice now there's a star. And initially, it was white then, but it does a database call, and it checks if I have favourited the tip. And I have. So it goes yellow. So what we can do is if I click that that star, it removes it from my favourite. So when I click back, you'll notice that table reloaded. It did it really quick then. But now that favorite, that tip is no longer a favourite. And we can do that for all of these. And eventually we'll have no tips left in our favourites. So let's just do that. So, right, so we're getting rid of all these. Right, so now we've got rid of all our favourites. As you can see, there's no favourites. So there's a few bits that we can go, I'll go through on there. One of the things is, when you load this window, instead of the um, the the data being, instead of the table being populated on window load as everything else is, this time it's doing it on focus. So when we're going into a tip and unfavourite it, I don't know what the best thing to say is unfavouriting it, unstarring it, I'll say. So when we're going in and we're unstarring it and coming back out, the table is, is regenerated or repopulated, whatever you want to call it. Because if you if you unstarred it and then went back to the list and it was still there, it wouldn't make sense. And it's just not it's just not um what people expect these days. I mean there's so many apps and and people are used to certain things. So um core functionality like that is something that you just need to address. So anyway, so yeah, so my tips, we've gone through that latest tip. So if we go into any of these, I'm just going to click a tip and we'll just favourite one. So we'll favourite this one. Come out. Da, da, da. Sorry. Come out and then go into our favourites. That'll be there now. One of the things um, I'll mention is you don't have to have made the tip to favourite it, but you can favourite your own tips. So... If you went into my tips, and if you remember my oh shit, that was one of our tips. But yeah, if you go into here, you can do it on your own tips. Come out and then go into here. We now have two. And yeah, and so on and so forth. You can add as many as you want. There's no limit to it. Um, one thing I'll go through in when we go through the API calls is for this window here this fave tips window that is using a join on a SQL table it's joining two tables together and I know someone requested that so 
I'll go through that and what's happening and stuff. Really simple, but it's effective. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's enough of me going on. Let's go through what's changed. So first, if I go into um, view tips, <coughs> viewtip.js, in which is in the UI folder, um, I've made a little note here for myself. So the star here, this is where the new content is. So we've got an image view, which we're populating with our star off. And star off is that white image of the star. So initially, it's having that. Um, just to make sure everyone understands what page or uh, what what window this would be is viewtip.js is I'll literally show you so it makes sense viewtip is any time you click one of these images and go through to this version of it this is viewtip.js so that's all of this and the white and start off.png is this and start on is that okay so, yeah. So anyway, so yeah, so we're making this image view. We're giving it that to begin with. So I've put a little note here. On page load, do a request and see if the current user has favorited this tip. So, and then also I've got, this will return zero for no and one for yes. Just as a, a little side note, whenever I'm... Um, attempting to add in some functionality to somewhere I'll always start with these really simple comments and just as many as I need if there's 10 there's 10 it doesn't matter so if you think of when I started doing this I literally just had that written down and then from there you start building up the functionality don't ever think that anything is too complicated to do because of how how big of a task it is there's no need to see it like that. What you need to do is just break it right down to the to the minimum of what it is. So, for instance, on this, I knew that on the page load I needed to do something. So I've put the the event on the the focus for the window. So yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But I just thought I'd say, don't ever get bogged down with how complicated something seems because it's not. You just really need to break it all down and not try and take it all on at once. But anyway, it's enough for that. So yeah, so this is when the window loads, we are doing this um, request here, it's an AJAX request really, this X XHR request, and what we're doing is we're going to our API.php where we've put all of our all of our calls are in this one PHP file, and the mode is check fave, and we're passing it the user ID and the tip ID, right? So then on window load. We're getting a response, and I'll show you the PHP in a minute. All it is is a one over zero. So then, what we're doing at the bottom, this is the important bit, is if it's more than zero, we're changing that start image to start on. So let's just go straight to that, I think. So it's check fave. So check fave is this one here. So it's literally there to there, really short. What it's doing is it's doing the call. It's passing the user ID, the tip ID. We're doing a query. We're doing a query, and what we're doing is we're selecting ID from our fav table, which I'm not sure if I've showed before. I'm, I don't think I showed it in the last episode, but all it is is it's a table with three fields an ID field, user ID, and tip ID, and that is it. So what we're doing is we're selecting ID from this table where the user ID equals our ID and the tip ID equals that. The reason we're doing this is for each tip there could the you could this there could only be this combination once basically. The tip ID and the user ID are both unique so there would only be one time where they would both be together and that would be if you liked the tip. So yes yeah, so what we do is we do a num rows on it and all this does is counts the result back from this query and then we're putting it in this variable and we're saying if num row if there's more than no rows so if there is a row we're passing back one else we're going to pass back zero and that is where this comes in where it says return zero for no one for yes and if it's one star on right so yeah I think that covers it for that so then the next thing we've got on click of the star 
I've even wrote Ajax. On click of the star, do Ajax call and update the DB. That means database. So then on here, I've just put on click, need to change the current state of the star. So again, so we've got the star dot add event listener click. What we're doing here is we're checking if the star dot image is equal to star on, we run this code. Else, so it's equal to start off. You do that, and what that's doing is so straight away you're changing the image, then you're doing the the call. So if we go on this one, so if the star was already on and you've clicked it, that means that you are un favoriting it, you're un starring it, whatever you want to call it. So straight away we do change it to that, so it's off, then. We send our request to the same file. This time the mode is update fave. We pass it the user ID, tip ID, and a fave of zero. And I'll show you what that does in a minute. But what I'll first I'll show you is if the star is off and we click it, we want to make the star on because now we are favoriting it and we're saying we want this to be added to our favorites. So then we send the request with a 1. And what we're doing here is same call, exactly the same, but this time we're sending fave equal to 1. <coughs> and I'll show you what happens with that now. So that is, what is it again? Update fave. So yeah, so that is, it's a little bit longer than the last one. There's still nothing too complicated. So update fave. Right. So on this one, we've got our variables. We have the things we're passing, which is the user ID, the tip ID, and our fave, which is 0 or 1. So what we're going to do is we're saying if fave is equal to 0, that means we're going to delete the tip from the database table. So if it's 0, we're doing the query. We want to delete from... The delete from the table where the user ID equals ID and tip ID equals tip ID. As I mentioned before, these will only ever be together one time because they're both unique. So then the result is removed. Else, so else means if it's not zero, and the only other option if it's not zero is if it's one. So that could that could say else if fave equals to one but there's no need really right so yeah there's no need to write that it's the same it's the equivalent so anyway so what we're doing here is we're inserting it so we're going to insert into the table the user ID and the tip ID and what I will do is I will show you this table in a second because it probably doesn't make that much sense at the minute but really it is literally nothing in it one thing I'll, I'll mention it in a sec actually it doesn't matter so then we're just returning inserted, and then we're exiting. So yeah, so I hope that all makes sense. It's quite simple, and I'll just show you it again in the app. So we click through into a tip. We have this. Then it's already select. It's already a favorite tip. So if I click that, it will then be deleted from my favorite table. So if we go into my faves now you'll see that that tip won't be here and that's this here the star dot add event listener now that's all of that so hopefully that makes sense so I'm gonna move on but just send me a message or something if you need a bit more explanation but like I said I, I, was, I said in the previous video I will be giving away all of this code I'm gonna tidy it all up and, and stuff like that but yeah so don't worry too much about it because I will be giving it all away at the end anyway so don't worry about it yeah right so now let's go into the fave.js so what this is fave.js is am I already on it? yeah it's this and you click fave tips that's fave.js and um, what this is is it's pretty much a copy of the latest.js which displayed our latest tips in the table this is pretty much the same as that there's one quite big difference is if I scroll up actually um, we are not showing this um, activity indicator 
on load because we're doing it in the focus event and we're also not populating the table on load and these were two things that we were doing for the latest table. I mean I've still called it latest table I've left it I've tried to leave the variables the same just so it so you can see how um, you can reuse things I mean you should really change the names e variables and stuff but as long as it makes sense to you that's that's what matters really so anyway, so um, let's have a look. So, I don't need to go for any of this. The only thing really is this, and it's this focus event. And what that is, is whenever the, the window comes into focus is when it's shown on screen. Focus is when it's showed on screen, and blur is when you move away from it. So, on when, it's, when the window comes on screen, we want to set data to null. Latest table dot data equals data which is null then show the activity indicator then we do the call to get the the data to populate the table then we set the data I just said data about 20 times but <laughs> sorry about that but if you try and think of it this way is when when the the window comes into view we want to wipe everything from that table and then we want to repopulate it and the reason we're doing that as I went through before is because if you go into a favorite tip and then you unstar it and then go back to that list of your favorites you don't want to see that tip there because you've removed it you shouldn't have to go back to the list of favorite tips then out again and then back in to see the correct data you should be able to see the correct data every time you visit a window a page or whatever so yes yeah, so that's why I did it on a focus because it just it just didn't make sense when I was messing around with it. So yeah, so that's that. Everything else is the same as latest.js. I I really don't think I need to go through it because it is it is exactly the same. The only thing that is different is um, the file that we are requiring to get the data, and that's more fave. API. No, that no, it's not. It's fave API. More fave API. I'll go through in a minute, but fave API is the one that populates the table initially and this is the one which does the call which has the join on it so let's go into this so yeah so this is the same as the other API calls we see in this mode is fave and we're just passing the user ID everything else is the same as before so let's look on here so here we go fave, mode fave right <laughs> Now, what's going on in this is this is, as I mentioned, this is once doing a join. The reason it's doing a join is because in the favorite table, we only store user ID and tip ID. Okay? And from that, we need to get the information for the tips. So it's fine just passing the tip ID and the and getting it's fine just passing the user's ID and getting the tip ID and the user ID back from the um, favorite table but you need more than that you want to see the actual information for the tip so what we needed to do was this join right so what I'm doing is let me really try and split this up to really explain what's going on right so we're doing our select just ignore these for one moment but we're selecting from our favorite table yeah and we select <coughs> the where statement is we're selecting from there where the user ID equals this ID with past it okay which is fine and from that that is correct we would get back the tip ID and the user ID but as I mentioned we don't want that we want to get the title the image and the actual tip itself so to do that what we needed to do was this join and I've done a left join and I'm joining onto the exchange tips table now the exchange tips table is the one that contains the title ID tip and image right so what we're saying is we want to join onto the tips table where the tip ID in the tips table is equal to the tip ID 
in our favorite table, okay? So that ensures that the information uh, marries up correct, okay? So it all links together. So then what you might think is a bit weird as well is on these things where I'm doing the select, I'm putting the table name in front of the column that I'm selecting. The reason I'm doing that is because if we were to just put, say I just put ID here and then try to call this, it wouldn't work because it's ambiguous because ID is in both of those, both of these tables. It's in tips and it's in fav tips. Those two tables both have a field called ID. So if I didn't put the table name dot column name or field name, what you want to call it, then it would not work. Um, if you're ever doing any queries like this and it's just not working, you're getting really confused, what you can do is at the top of the page, you can put these two lines, display errors one, any set, so any your any file for PHP is um, it's like a settings file. And what you can do is you can display errors and then e error reporting e all, right? So while I was messing around with this to get it working, I oh, had that on so I could see the errors myself on the page. So if, if a query didn't work, it would say um, field name ambiguous or whatever else, you know. It's just helpful. That's just like a little, another little helpful thing. So what I think I'll do now is I'll literally show you these two tables just to try and explain a bit more why we needed to join them. All right, so let's have a look. So here's here's the table. What I'm going to show you first is obviously the columns. So we've got ID, which is just the the auto increment primary key of it. But the main things that we're using in in our statements, our select statements, is tip ID and user ID. And again, this is the favorite table. Okay. So it's really about those two fields. So if you look here where it says indexes, I've added an index on the tip ID and the user ID. And I think I mentioned uh, indexes before, and what it does is it just helps speed up your queries. It's um, it's it's something that you should do, and and when when you don't have many uh, hits to the table, say, it doesn't really matter. But say you end up with a big user base, and a lot of people are hitting this constantly, you're going to need to put indexes on these, and you'd be surprised at how much it can speed everything up. But anyway, yeah, so it's something you should do. You don't have to, but you should. <clears throat> so yes, let's have a look then. So if we browse that, so at the minute there's only actually two favourite tips and those are the two that I added in this video earlier. So you see there's the tip IDs forum and this is the user ID. So the user ID is the current logged in user. The tip ID is the ID of the tip. And what I'll show you now is if we look for tip 14, okay, in the tips table, let's look for ID 14, right, so here's tip 14, let's have a look at that. So this is in the tips table. So if we have a look here, then we see great tip, this tip is going to show you how to do something really simple. So let's have a look. Great tips, that's this one, this is ID 14. This tip is going to show you how to do something which is really simple. So that is that. So ID 14 from the favourite table is how we get all of this information. I hope that helped anyone that was was unsure. But yeah, so anyway. So we're selecting from the favourite table. Then we're joining to the tips table. The reason we're doing it to get the tip information, right? That's enough for that. So now what else is there? So now we've got the more load more button at the bottom again. So that is when the more fave API comes into play. So let's so that's on the view tip where you call that. Let me just find that because I looked at it earlier didn't I? So this is when you click load more as I just mentioned, but yeah. So you click Load More, so what we're doing is it's the same as the other Load More uh, pages, but we're doing a different call here, and we're calling More Fave, we're passing the Start Index, 
and user ID. So load more. Here we go, more fave. Load five more tips in the fave tips section. So we connect, we have our start index, and what we're doing is the exact same query as above, but this time we're just using the limit like this. Start index, get five. And that's all that is. I think I went through that before. That's the index you want to start at. That's how many you want to get. So I'll just mention that if you wanted to do pagination for a website, you'd do it with limit. And that's all that is. So if if that number's 15 and that's 5, it will get 5 tips from index 15. Yeah, so that's it. I think I've gone on a bit. I'm going to try and cut this down because it's about 35 minutes at the moment. But I hope that has helped out. I know someone sent me a message um, saying they'd like some uh, stuff for, that's more basic as this is getting quite hard to follow. But what I think I'm going to do, probably be the next video, is I'm going to do an uh, Appcelerator Basics video. It might be two parts, I don't know. But I'll try and go through everything that is like really, not really, really basic, but go through different views, uh, different methods, like just just basic sort of things like streaming audio, um, creating windows, and all those sorts of things. You know, like I can't, just everything. So I might do that. Um, one thing I didn't do in this video, which I said I would, and I'm really sorry to the guy that I said I'd do it, I haven't added the Facebook share stuff in. Because I completely forgot about it until I just started recording it. But what I'll do is when I come back to um, this tip exchange series, that I'm, well, this building app series, I'll add it in. I don't know what to do more for um, this app now, as, as far as this series goes anyway. So I don't know. I might add the, f the share button in on, um, on a tip window maybe then I'm not too sure at all. We could, you know what? I might do something where you can, instead of just being able to upload images, maybe make it so you can do video as well. I might do that, actually. That might be good. But if anyone wants to send me a message, private, or I'll get a few, that are, a few private messages, if you want to do that and request something, then I'm more than happy to do it. So, I mean, sometimes it's better for other people to, to request um, something to do in these sorts of things because I don't want to just trail off down something that's really shit and then it's no good to anyone is it so yeah so anyway I'll leave it with you but yeah, the next video I'll definitely do is a, um, an, a sort of an introduction to Accelerator so I'll steer away from this series for a couple of videos then I'll come back and I'll I'll carry on yep yeah, so alright